Good afternoon, everyone. It is really a matter of a great pleasure for us. Today we have an eminent speaker, academician, administrator, and moreover, my senior. I worked with him for two years when I was in the beginning phase of my professional career. And on behalf of Shurabindu Society, I welcome you sir, for this today's session, although participation, the number is less, but <laughs> definitely it will be an enriching session, I believe. And before we start, uh, we will just meditate for one minute. Uh, I request Mr. Divan to kindly play the music. I feel very honored to have Dr. Ramesh and the Gaur sir with us today. He visited Puducherry to attend a conference at Pondicherry University and uh, he had many programs with different institutions and we had a discussion of requests sir to kindly spare your little time to enlighten us about what is happening particularly in the cultural sector. And sir, for your kind information that uh, Shurabindu the Society, the mother is the permanent president of uh, Shurabindu the Society and Dr. Pradeep Marambhai is our chairman but on the division of the honor of the circumstances he has some things was not able to join and he has sent his place to his program so. And uh, Shurabindu the Society is basically registered as a uh, registered institution under the Society's Registration Act and it has been recognized by the Department of Science and Industrial Research, that is the zero scientific and industrial research organizations under the Department of Science and Technology, under the Ministry of Science and Technology. Sir. And also earlier the society had this institution of national importance and United Nations Economic and Social Council status. Those two things were in the process to renew. More than 300 branches all over India, the society is striving to implement particularly transforming the social ethos and to many sectors starting from the cultural, education, health, sustainable development, tourism also new things we have started recently. We have jail reform projects and when we talk about culture basically culture is one of the promising areas because Shurabindu has extensively written on the grand cultural ethos of Indian culture and he defends in his defense of Indian culture he has gave uh, insightful discussions and uh, ideas how to explore the true spirit of Indian culture. And sir, we are working here as I was part of the IGNC under your dynamic guidance and support. And I was also associated with the institutions under the Ministry of Culture for 14 years. So after joining here since two and a half years, we have co some of the projects like 
scientific heritage and knowledge system of India, this intangible cultural heritage, tourism and sustainable development, and also we have capacity building program for the artists and cultural professionals. And Dr. Gopal Jairamanj is there. We have shared many occasions and many programs. And we have also started a project called that is uh, International Cultural Relations. Since uh, I worked with uh, IGNCA for four years, especially in the cultural exchange program, that is one of my favorite areas to work on. So we started the project, and uh, we are today we we feel very honored because we have organized arts program under this cultural international cultural heritage uh, relations project. So I would like to briefly introduce so, uh, Professor Dr. Ramesh Chandragauji. He is the PhD Fulbright Scholar from Virginia Tech uh, University, USA. And currently he is the Dean Administration and Director and Head of Kalani, the Division of Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts under the Ministry of Culture. And uh, he is basically uh, it would take approximately half an hour to introduce him. More than uh, hundreds of committees, and uh, wherever you will see, you will find Dr. Gautz's presence is there. But most prominent are he was the former director of National School of Drama under the Ministry of Culture, and he was also the key person to establish the Indian Institute of Heritage, that is one of the new institutions which Ministry of Culture has established, which is basically uh, and sir is also the member of International Advisory Committee, UNESCO Memory of the World Program. He is the co-chair and member of UNESCO Global Task Force, International Decade of Indigenous Languages. And also the member of the Governing Council, Implement, uh, Association of Indian Universities, AIU Cultural Committee, BOS, KU Kurukshetra University, Shanchi University and many others. He is also the chairman of NDLTD Conference Committee and <coughs> member board of studies of associ and associate editor of EYD. He was also uh, is also the chairman of Niti IOP Project Management Committees for networking of union ministries and department libraries. He was also the ex member of International Consultative Committee on Digital Dunhang China Project. Expert group for UNESCO International Center for Documentary Heritage, that is the ICTS, South Korea, and Research Council, CSIR, NIS, UNESCO. He was also the ex chairman of IFLA International Advisory Committee on Cultural Heritage and an expert, particularly in the field of research ethics, plagiarism, digitization, digital preservation of cultural heritage and archives. So, this is basically a small uh, introduction to Gorsar. Moreover, I, I want to introduce him because Shri the Society, Ashram, all of it belongs to the spiritual things, whatever we need to offer to the mind. I have my personal experience because uh, when I shifted from Pondicherry to Delhi in 2009, I joined IGNCA and Sir was my senior at that time. Being a student of literature for the first time, I saw some 2 lakhs, 2.5 lakhs of slide collections from different uh, museums, the libraries and archives. And also with the guidance and support of Sir B, I was involved in many of the exhibition projects, many conferences, even in the IFLA conferences I did recall Sir. And uh, Gurudev Tagore's 150th birth anniversary, we had a beautiful exhibition. Unfortunately, that might be we missed because so much times. So we had a beautiful memory, actually, uh, more than one decade we had some small interactions and I hope I, I meet with him more than a decade so. <laughs> so this is a small interaction to Dr. Gaur sir and uh, we are sir, we are feel very happy to your presence here. You spent a beautiful time for uh, accepting our invitation and we love to interact and today the participation is less because the exams are going on in universities and many of the staffs. But we mother says that number uh, we do not believe in numbers so all the spiritual initiations and big things happen with only person to person sometimes in the single one so so i do not want to speak much thing but uh, before i request you to kindly share your valuable insights i'd like to give a uh, on to sir just once.
Thank you. I also give you my book for your library. Uh, the Languages of India. Today morning we had a very wonderful session sir, delivered at the French Institute of Pondicherry and he was talking about this Memory of the World Register program and this book is very interesting. I would request sir if you can get one more copy. I will send you. I will keep it in our library. I will send you how many copies you want. I will send it to you. The uniqueness of this book is sir has covered more than 1,600 pieces uh, of India. One of the unique books. We we'll, uh, love to keep a copy in your library. Yeah, I'll send you another yes. book. Mapping of archives in India. So that is also very interesting. So now I request Sir to kindly share his valuable insights. Uh, thank you, dear Kishore. Uh, it's uh, indeed a great honor. Uh, and uh, I also don't believe in number because I remember in international conference in uh, France, I delivered my keynote when there were only four people in the hall. So, uh, this is not, uh, numbers are not important, important how, and I don't consider this as a lecture, I consider this as a kind of interaction with all of you and I request like wherever you want me to interrupt or want to get some idea or some, want to correct me or want to add something, please feel free to stop me, we will be happy to. Uh, thanks Kishore for your kind introduction, but one thing which would I like to inform you is uh, as a part of my introduction, I, it's an indeed honor in 2020-2022 I have an opportunity to uh, get uh, one tableau created uh, uh, for Swami Arvindo. That was my like uh, honor and I, like, I think that's something uh, I, I don't know like uh, that Tableau was created in just 12 working days in 19 days. So that's the power of the Swami Arvindo because generally Tableau construction in government starts six months before sometime in August and uh, this was on 7th January when Prime Minister asked Ministry to get created a uh, Tableau in the 26th January parade on Swami Arvindo and that task was given to me and I was, I don't know how it happened. It was full COVID that time and uh, I, I see people got in, affected with COVID and uh, I survived, there is no problem, uh, nothing, uh, I was just freely walking and so that was the like uh, blessings of uh, Swami Urbindo and I pay my homage to him in this uh, uh, very, very important spiritual city. Uh, when we talk about the culture unites all, why we need this slogan? Because recently when you see the G20 meeting took place, this was the slogan uh, basically uh, very much highlighted by our ministry and uh, talks a lot about culture unites all. When we need unity, when there is a kind of divide and uh, Unity only required when we feel there is a, some kind of conflict, there was some kind of divide. So let me just begin with some kind of my understanding of this divide, why we need culture to unite us all. If you see Indian civilization, I am not an historian and not an expert on uh, Indology also, but I see from the literature that India has minimum at least 5,000 year old history of civilization. That's evidence are available and uh, we can easily take out from various sources. So uh, you you see talk about our epics like Ramayana, Mahabharata or Bhagavad Gita uh, or even in this part of the country Thirukul or many, uh, many of the variations of Ramayana or uh, other important texts. One thing is clear that uh, India started or India having a kind of like uh, history of something which to, today when we see that kind of uh, division was never exist. 
we never have any religion we never have any uh, caste system we have dharma dharm was not religion basically this dharm and religion are totally two different things uh, and uh, when we talk about maryada prashatam ram this entire philosophy was of dharm not religion how this uh, religion came into being as per my understanding that started when uh, we got the first uh, mughal invasion because we all know that uh, if you talk about if you if you say that hindu religion then hindu religion is the quite oldest and uh, all it may be uh, history of uh, muslims or christianity or any other uh, sub segment of hindu religion everything comes later so basically the first time the kind of division took place when uh, we were invaded by the mughals and uh, suddenly it becomes hindu muslim and uh, that was the something we all know that when any invasion took place the invaders always try to destroy your history your culture your education your they want to impose their own thought process and they want to and that was evident because there was no muslim before mughal invasion whatever muslims came into india is after mughal invasion only so that they want they, because they were in few in numbers because they were having arm strong arm uh, uh, power so they to in, increase the, the kind of like uh, population they start conversions there there may be forceful conversion or maybe conversion based on certain uh, uh, like uh, creating misconception so that may like we start having something called religion uh, in terms of and division started uh, and uh, took place and similarly uh, like uh, if we talk about uh, uh, after that i think this was a more than 800 or 1000 years of invasion then then we have this european invasion when uh, britishers and uh, this part like there was a, uh, uh, some other country and goa so so this european invasion up uh, mainly with the britishers they also came with certain kind of mindset to rule and uh, when somebody want to rule you they want to impose that why i am ruling uh, and because by the time world was little uh, more civilized more education uh, more democracy democracy so somewhere i think they have to justify it why they are ruling it and they created a kind of divide and they utilize india's history mm-hmm. and uh, india's culture india in, in a way that they enhance the division through caste through uh, ethnic groups through various kind of so that division uh, and because they want to prove that we are ruling india because india is a country of uh, snake charmers they don't have civilization they don't have history they don't have that was the kind of mindset they were trying to create all over the world because they want to prove that they are they are doing something good for india and they are here to improve the situation and every every uh, ruler or invader do this kind of thing so i think that was the burst period when uh, our culture our education our uh, because what mughals were not able to do in 800 years britishers able to do it in just uh, 100 or 200 years because they eroded our history they they rewrote the history they they misinterpreted they like <coughs> take example of manushmriti manushmriti was rewritten in that context that basically it was shown as a hindu scripture a hindu religion kind of like scripture which was not because they want to have some kind of basic division or understanding uh, among the society so with that kind of division they able to divide the society uh, putting each other in name of the religion because then they have two religion 
mainly Muslims and Hindi to put it each against uh, against each other, and then also within Hindu religion, uh, they able to divide on the basis of various caste, and they announce that caste is to various kind of like, and which truly speaking, the this caste. If you go to the history of caste in India, uh, I, I I'm not hundred percent sure, but this classification was based on the the responsibility and the work culture like chhatriya who were fighting in the army they were known as chhatriyas who were doing business they were given the uh, caste uh, title of the bastia those who were doing the kind they were not educated or less educated they were doing the work they were called shudra so these were not the caste this was the kind of classification based on the work culture and uh, a brahmin who were doing education or those who were imparting uh, doing certain kind of philosophy i think slowly slowly that diluted and converted so all this and also that's the story of india like then if you talk about a uh, worldwide uh, i had an opportunity to travel out almost southeast asia or east asia i have seen dono i have seen uh, azanta these similarities indicate uh, that this boundaries what we are talking about nations were not there uh, you go to angkor wat in cambodia one of the largest religious complex so it, it clearly indicate that at least uh, it may be uh, a story of kandahar uh, many uh, i have been to indonesia malaysia and i have seen that how this conversion take place from hindus to buddhism to jainism to to muslims so that uh, conversion based on the rule uh, recently i was a keynote speaker in one of the conference on the central in south asian literature this one indonesian scholar she presented a story of a ruler of east java now she she was trying to communicate that this king was a hindu believer and he promoted hindu culture and hindu religion but the fact of the matter the, the 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 story is that it was a hindu kingdom in east java and there are enough evidence available in literature so it, so she she see all over the world uh, but now that has gone we are in the different world we are we are talking about uh, something uh, uh, where we, we, we have nations and there are a lot of uh, political or democracy so the world has totally changed so now when in this today's context when we are talking like culture unites all it has significance in the present context uh, we can't go to history we can't change the history we cannot go back to that era but at least we can learn from that uh, and we can correct many things so that kind of division uh, based on our faith and beliefs uh, various kind of ethnic groups various kind of like it, even even uh, costumes represent a certain culture uh, uh, food cuisine like it, it, everything has a certain culture you have worked in corporate when we we say it's a corporate culture why we say it's a corporate culture because there are some certain uh, uh, kind of system and beliefs and faith and strategies and discipline like uh, when we i have read this uh, reaching management by the james happy and michael and i i applied that reaching management application to certain organization so that the modern context of connecting culture or talking about culture and uniting culture is entirely different to what it was thousands of years before so in the present context what is important i think the first important thing is the humanity we have to believe that the first uh, shared identity if something is there that is humanity we all are human beings and every human being deserves the same equal respect and equal rights so that's the first uh, shared identity if you have to see like shared identity you have to see within the country or within the uh, uh, globe 
that also makes difference like when we are talking about shared identity in india like uh, i am from north part of india and here in south india there is lot of difference into uh, various kind of faith and beliefs and traditions but there are lot of common shared identity we have lot common shared festivals we enjoy uh, many festival which are of common shared heritage ram has presence and beliefs uh, all over india so that's the was here at shared identity there is a shared belief so the most important thing of culture to unite is we have to identify those shared identities because if we have to bring people together we have to make or we have to tell that these are our shared identities that's why we are here like uh, we don't believe in that theory that we were the uh, aryans migrated from some other part of world to this world we never believes in that because we believe that we are in the oldest civilization in the world how can we migrated from somewhere else when the civilization started from this part of the world how can it possible so we don't believe in that kind of like uh, 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 statements and and why these statements are there that if you see the after uh, during this british invasion uh, all kind of like history books or the literature written and and one more uh, problem what we faced during this invasion that most of our literature india is possessing near about 1 crore manuscripts we have at igc we have documented 4.5 million manuscripts we know these manuscripts are available in which library in which location and, and these manuscripts are in which scripts pali prakriti brahmi nandi nagari granth uh, tiglari modi and most of these scripts neither we nor neither uh, many of you only the scholars can read it so our entire history and literature was in the form of those scripts which nobody knows about it and unfortunately during that period uh translation didn't take place and uh, instead of studying those that literature uh, we start uh, studying what came as an uh, european model the 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 the, the, the influential indians who were having capacity to go abroad to study then they become part of framework or a model or the leaders or the the policy maker or the educators so many of the things written in the after even after independence if you see the initial years i have been in jnu for 7 years uh, i have very closely worked with many professors i don't blame anybody for those kind of mindsets i know that they were reading the literature that which was written and with certain kind of facts were given but we never tried to find out are these facts are correct or not or are these facts uh, because we have only one mechanism to verify those facts from our history and our history was written in form of the scripts and languages which are not known to the common people so a common man cannot read a manuscript he needs indologic support of a indologist or some uh, scholar who can translate into common language uh, uh, english or the regional languages or hindi whatever uh, one can read it so in this context like uh, that <coughs> real truth about the various facts didn't came into uh, like uh, being so uh, that way that division uh, by gender and and today like when we are trying to create filling up that divide and try to create uh, that uh, reducing that gap it requires a lot of efforts in that so uh, first is the shared identity then next thing is that when we go to like uh, when I, i go to any part of the world uh, and i suddenly see some asian there particularly persons from bangladesh or pakistan here we, we may be fighting with each other but in us or in other country we suddenly feel that we are brothers and we we are 
interconnected to each other and he shows that kind of affectionate and uh, the love that uh, how how it emerged it emerged through the culture through costumes through the language because that that connect us that unites us uh, when we are away from like uh, that uh, because when there is a majority in, when you see that so that costume connects you uh, uh, unites uh, all kind of like this uh, and then comes art and artifacts like if you see uh, the the types of uh, craft form we are having there are lot of similarities between uh, one region to another regions uh, maybe there may be some more varieties in one region less varieties in the other region so this art and craft definitely connect us uh it may be pottery making uh, pottery making uh, maybe different styles of pottery but it, it is it is all over all over india we know that is the art which is connecting uh, and which is which is very common to all of us similarly when we talk about the like take example temple architecture of india uh there may be different variations in temple architecture but when you talk about the deities and uh, gods and goddesses lot of things which connect us uh, we uh, the kind of like uh, the the prayer we do or uh, worship we do uh, there so many things connect us and unites us uh, in in form of these and one more thing uh, culture of fairs and festivals see we have been known a country with the, fairs and festival starting from mahakum every state every region every and these fair and festivals are not just religious like next month or not this month on 14th of february we are celebrating basant panchmi which is which is common all over india everybody and and it is not just definitely there is a belief that it is the birthday of the goddess of learning ma saraswati but there are so many other stories connected by the basant panchmi celebrations similarly like we took a project here in south india rice paddy culture of south india see during the harvesting of rice paddy there are so many fairs and festivals were organized or still organized in many part of that country when you go to punjab north past baisakhi is celebrated like anything even in, uh, there are still festivals in uh, india which are attended by more than 100 millions at least i know three festival three four festivals which are attended by more than 100 million people in that context like you can understand the like interest of the people uh, they know that uh, this is something uh, very crowdy a uh, lot of chances of some kind of mishapping but people enjoy it so this fairs and festival also are the, the the their culture also unites us and give us an opportunity to meet uh, each other and bless each other um, and then talk about a uh, various kind of traditions like uh, our cultural tradition it may be marriage traditions if you you go to uh, like most of the part many things are common in various traditions uh, the kind of like uh, excitement kind of uh, that uh, uh, the rituals taking place in marriages some difference but many things are in common so that unites us uh, and when we talk about various kind of other social traditions and not just that if you talk about starting from birth to death every time we have some or other occasion to celebrate to organize and this is common in most of our reasons that unites us that's make uh, so in this context like uh, in context of india we have so many shared common heritage we have so many shared faith and beliefs uh, 
which unites us, which uh, and which are related to culture. So, like we have celebrated this Ajadi ka Pradmoksha. In during one year, we have such huge programs uh, to pay homage to the unsung heroes of our freedom struggle. So, and when we are talking about these unsung heroes, paying tribute to them. It is not just from one part of the India, from entire country. Every nook and corner we are one sun, unsun hero is emerging. That's unites us. Uh, and in IGNC, like uh, we are making uh, very various kind of documentaries. Like we have made number of documentaries on Ram Lila, Ramayana. Ram Lila is performed in different part of India in different way. Uh, in rural area, if you go, the performance, but everything is same. The characters are same. Uh, the maybe some dialogue delivery may be different, or the the kind of like dialogue uh, narration will be different. But the basic concept and context of the Ramayana is same. It may be, uh, and then you talk about various kind of kathas. What you in English. Uh, Popularly, we call it storytelling. Kathas are so popular in our country, uh, like in each part of India, you will find the various types of kathas related to religious things, related to our folk tales, folk stories. So, all this also, uh, as a part of culture, unites us. So, now this is something like uh, uh, I am talking about uh, like uh, India, but like if you see the the globe, uh, as we have talked about uh, G20 countries currently, but this is applicable to the entire world. Gandhiji become a kind of uh, national hero or Rashtrapita through culture of peace, but. Uh, it is not just about India. If you talk about Martin Luther King or National Mandela in recent times, you will find so many such uh, heroes, though those promoted culture of peace. So that unites the world because they become respectable all over the world. Like uh, go to any country, globally. Everybody believes that culture of peace is the best way to resolve the conflicts and to come out of this kind of uh, situation the world is facing. Uh, so basically what I am, uh, these are scattered thoughts, I have not prepared any stru uh, structured presentation to speak, uh, just Kishore discussed with me to share my thoughts on that. Uh, I strongly believe that uh, like our slogan of Vasudev Katamakam was not a slogan. It was very much in practice in India. We have done it. We have, we have, like when there was kings and kingdoms only, that time it was very much in practice. We have, like how, see, count the population of invaders. It was not even 10% of the Indian population that time. We could have thrown them like anything without even weapon also. But the kind of like uh, environment and like we respect everybody, we, we welcome a anybody, everybody. So there are so, so many, like if you go the real history, you will find that uh, we never have that kind of like philosophy. So this Vasudev Kutambam, what has been promoted, uh, has to be understood in the right context. And culture really needs certain kind of pathways to collaborate and develop uh, some kind of like uh, balanced approach in dealing with uh, modern issues of conflicts. Uh, it may be uh, issues related to peace or e uh, equality. Like many times uh, I believe that it is easy to give lessons to the people or the uh, countries which are not very well developed or least developed or less developed. 
but is there anybody to give the lessons to the wrong doings by the the world who will so called developed countries because that's a kind of inability and 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 when we talk about some kind of pathways to develop a balanced approach there is no balanced approach there uh like we are talking about the global warming the the the, the largest issue emerged from somewhere else but the restrictions and all kind of uh, 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 lessons are being given to the, the the countries which are not that developed they are supposed to develop the model and so uh, as a person from cultural heritage uh, i strongly believe that since our uh, ancient civilization today till today we have always been a peace loving country we always believe in was we can offer a lot to the world through our culture and uh, our culture which i really feel very proud of it and um, i take pride in our legacy uh, but somehow that pride only comes when younger generation should know about it because, because there are many hidden facts there are many things which are still not known to the many many people but particularly because when i i i talk to the people uh, sometime uh, because they are aggressive younger generation is always they always ask for evidences and the proofs for believing something they don't believe uh, anything just like that like uh, our generation may be still very obedient if father say something this is this i i believe in that but now my my daughter don't does not believe in it she ask clarification she don't does not she never dare to uh, raise questions to me uh, so now i think this time is little different and i think in this context uh, we have to be very uh, active and uh, we have to really analyze all these uh, issues and uh, i hope that the new researchers will focus on creating those kind of uh, pathways and uh, uh, balance approached and also evidences like uh, something uh, like uh, I, if i have to say this is this then i have to have some evidences also uh, so in this context like uh, uh, i'll be happy to have your opinion and feedback and suggestion anything which you feel because uh, we have we have we are starting a uh, like i want to conclude with this one i strongly believe that this need to be promoted to younger generation so from this month we are starting a series in delhi called for colleges and uh, universities this is called cultural policy chopal so we are going to each and every college of delhi university or university like jamia jnu and we are inviting eminent scholar like uh, sanjeev sanyal will be speaking on in jnu on 14 rediscovering our maritime heritage uh, uh maritime heritage of india so similarly lot of such talks uh, we are organizing and the basic purpose is that that our young mind should know about culture they should know real or true facts about our culture so that may give us uh, more aware or more uh, more uh, like uh, educated youth in terms of culture and uh, when they know the real potential of the culture because uh, even have even has lot of slogan culture for development and uh, sustainable goals and other thing but it can't be just a slogan or it cannot be just uh, un or unesco can implement this is uh, each and every country has to do something to really uh, uh, come out with that kind of situation to really educate the young minds because they are the future and uh, uh, we have to bring out truth uh, so they they will be really feeling uh, connected with the culture and i strongly believe that uh, when you know your culture uh, you 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 love it you feel proud of it and it gives a lot of 
happiness and uh, uh, a lot of uh, a sense of pride to all of you. So, with this, I close it here, and I will be happy to have your comments or any uh, further information on that. Thank you. It was a wonderful session, and uh, when I was part of IGLC, sometimes we had the opportunity to listen from sir. And I recall that uh, under his guidance, we started a program that is Kalani the Outreach some Lecture Series. <laughs> so sometimes during these uh, programs, we had the opportunity to listen to him. And I was so wonder because being a strict and a hardcore uh, administration, administrator, uh, he finds time to, and within a short time, at least within half an hour, he was as almost all the aspects. So, you spoke about uh, this uh, diversity, especially. I would like to just quote what Shirovindu and Mother mentions about this. You mentioned about the diversity and all the foreign inversions, how this culture was. It was not destroyed, actually, some modifications, yet because uh, this is emotional culture, actually, what you mentioned, because the spirit is there. One can destroy the civilization, but one cannot destroy the spirit of the soul. And slowly, because we you also mentioned about the strong literary heritage, especially starting from the Vedas, and uh, its applied aspects, which was flourished to the architectural sites, uh, even the cross-cultural things also you mentioned. And uh, the similarities, especially the shared cultural heritage, that is much more important to find the similarities between, not only between countries, but also communities, the peoples, and also to strengthen the future things. It was really a wonderful session. Uh, I would like to quote uh, Sri Aurobindo's one quotation. In his uh, The Ideal of Human Unity, Sri Aurobindo clearly addresses one that the nature's law in our progress. Because uh, when we talk about this Indian culture, especially it was in many cases it was highly criticized by the Western people. Uh, I do not know what way they interpreted when I was uh, doing my masters, I got a book. The title was India, but the first line was horrible. I'll tell you if I had demanded like, India is a rich country, but the second half is very dangerous actually. India is a rich country, but inhabited by the poets. Actually, what the hell is this? I will not read this book actually. <laughs> How can I, in what way we can actually? So, Shurabhan writes that uh, he realized a secure, clear and firmly held unity in principle, a rich, even an unlimited diversity in its application might be possible without any fear of desert confusion or strife. Shurabhan also, in his defense of Indian culture writes, Indian civilization has been the form and expression of a culture as great as any of the historic civilizations of mankind, great in religion, great in philosophy, great in science, great in thought of many kinds, great in literature, art and poetry, great in the organization of society and politics, and great in craft and trade and commerce. So it has beautifully mentioned about the wrong interpretations, especially the scriptures, the traditions and the communities. Even if the great scholar Max Muller in his Hibbert lectures, which was published under the title, India, What It Can Teach Us. Max Muller refers when the people of Europe was traveling in the jungles. There was such a place on the earth where the people were talking about the Atman and Paramatman. I will point to India. Max Muller has mentioned these things. The title is India, What It Can Teach Us, basically. Why Max Muller said that I will point to India? Because he never visited. He was basically from German and uh, the British people, Isaac or he went, the British people gave a very difficult task to, to interpret the Vedas. Neither that time he was familiar with the Sanskrit language nor with the English language and he learned that language and tried to interpret those Vedas and he was the first who collected with the traditional Pandis, we published the Vedas and all these things. So when we talk about the grand cultural heritage, what Sir has very meticulously and very precisely mentioned, 
So culture, what we have little understood, is it has its own soul which is over decay. And the message of this Vasudeva Kudumbakam, which was one of the strongest mottos we can say, India's Z20 presidency, and we have seen what the vibration was continuing not only through the country but also all over the world. This is a very unique concept actually. So this Vasudeva Kutumbakam is only one fourth of a mantra that is from the Mahupanishad, Maha Upanishad. The Rishi clearly defines like the entire universe is a family, but how? If it's the concept is but why we are not implementing? The Rishi clearly defines I am Nijaha Parveti Ganana Lavuchetasam. That means this is mine, that is yours. That division comes where the conscious is not fully awakened. Lavuchetas. But Udara Charitana, whose consciousness is fully awakened, developed and transformed. Udara Charitanam tu, but for them, Vasudeva Kutumbakam. So this is the message which is mentioned in the Upanishads, even if prior to that, the Vedas also very clearly defines Yatra Vishu Bhati Ekanidam. The Rishi also again defines Yatra Vishu Bhati Ekanupam. So many things, the treasures are there and sir very clearly mentioned about the shared cultural heritage, especially connecting cultures and uh, communities. And IGNCA under the aegis of Ministry of Culture, they have the area study program. I was fortunate enough to be part of the particularly South East Asian countries, East Asia, Central and West Asian countries. I have worked for four years. Sometimes uh, I ask many people, what is beyond the ocean, sir? That's beautiful, you will see after that. Many people say, oh, it is water only. I told, no, it's not water. You just go some 700 kilometers from state from here. The Port Blair is there. But from Port Blair, some 600, all these South East countries are there. So we have a shared cultural heritage, and uh, sir has beautifully defined. And uh, I hope that uh, culture particularly we have just created the diversity like in many attacks were happened in the world history also we find when the civilizations were isolated there was no contact with each other when they came in contact with each other they forgot how to live in a harmonious way they fought with each other so the world history says the class of civilizations is fighting happened then the, all the civilizations was collapsed and the rise of nation the concept of the nations, even if this process is still continuing. Many nations, it is being um, scattered into small, small nations. Everywhere we have created the boundaries. We have not, not, not left a single place where we can live. We have areas, we have boundaries all over in the space, in the water, in the land, everywhere. So what's I mentioned about this shared cultural heritage can be a tool, especially in terms of Indian culture, like the yoga as a soft power, especially in cultural diplomacy, in multicultural theism, and the pluricultural things also, these things can be utilized. And sir, we are very much thankful for your ideas, especially you pointed about the younger generations and the activities which IGNC has created, especially for the dissemination part. <coughs> and uh, we have eminent scholars, uh, Madam from Philosophy Department, Pondicherry University, recently we met at the ISKCON conference at JNU. So Mr. Joy, my colleague from uh, Swarnim Puducherry, they are doing a lot of activities in the practical level of schools, villages. Arvind Akiva is an artist and many others. So now this floor is open, so we can have an interactive session. Can I give you an insight please, from please. Indian philosophy? Please, well, you can use the mic. Indian uh, philosophy or uh, its culture is known as uh, Sanatana Dharma, which we all know. And uh, this uh, Hindu or Indian is because of the Persians who used it to give a geographical identity south of Indus River. And uh, this is known as Manava Samskriti. Manava Dharma because it is intended for human beings and Samskriti is the word for culture because the samskaras are responsible for our uh, personality whatever we are as such and so the purification of the personality 
Culturally, we have the 16 samskaras, conception in the womb, nilam, theshti, all this vidyarambha, karna, chedana, nama, karna, marriage and all these sort of uh, sacraments, 16 sacraments. And uh, sacraments have, uh, the samskaras have two functions. One, they purify consciousness, which is uh, polluted or uh, contaminated by selfish uh, tendencies, ashuddha vasanas. And uh, they remind the individual that there are duties to discharge, because Indian philosophy is a duty-oriented uh, philosophy, the three ranas. Deva Rina, Pitra Rina, Rishi Rina, and the performance of the Panchamaha Yajnas, which will be responsible for this consciousness, Vasudaiva Kutumbaka. Deva Yajna, Pitru Yajna, Rishi Yajna, were doing Swadhyaya, Mana, that uh, Manushya Yajna, Atidi Devo Bhava, where the social bonding takes place between people and Bhuta Yajna, where we are seeing the one in uh, nature, Vasudeva, not just the jivas, but even the jagat. So we are seeing everything as Brahman animating the Nama Rupa. And uh, so this uh, structure of our personality, if we take Vidyaranya's Jivan Mukti Viveka, Deha Vasana, conceived in the body, Deha Bhimana, so and so. Shastra Vasana, desire for lot of knowledge from different branches of the different systems. And um, Loka Vasana, desire for name and fame. So these are the, uh, the structure of the personality and then we have these uh, samskaras that are there. So the lower ones have to be replaced or substituted by the more elevating or edifying uh, ideas which we have in the different systems in the form of sadhanas. So the psychology involved here is substitution to cultivation of opposites and if a person is a miser, generosity. A short-tempered person will have to practice patience. An arrogant person should practice humility, one. The other is Sakshi Bhava. So the, by uh, practicing that, all the enemies are within us. Kama, Krodha, Loba, Moha, the Shadrapus. And Ramayana and the Mahabharata symbolize that even one of these is enough to destroy even the greatest of individuals like Ravana who was a great Shiva Bhakta, a scholar and a, a, a warrior. Duryodhana symbolizes Loba and Ravana symbolizes Kam. So among the six, even these two were sufficient to damage. Just like a small hole can sink a huge ship. So these are the weaknesses that human beings have to guard. And uh, to, among the purushas, purushartas, excessive pursuit of artha, overindulgence in karma, no respect for dharma, and not at all bothered about moksha. This is the cause of all the present situation all over the world. And uh, the youth across the globe, five problems, drinks, drugs, dress, dance, divorce. These five are responsible for the destruction of the society. Youth are going wayward because of this. There's a difference between modesty and modernity. So our cultural values we have to realize. We have to, even when the children are young, Chito Padesha, Jataka tales, all these sort of uh, stories we have to teach the young. And uh, that is why we have to 
bring in the total mental transformation and introduce yoga even at the school level. If any kind of a subtle change in mental attitudes has to be brought in, and what we call Shastra, there are four criteria. We don't have to go by Western standards for calling signs. Anubandha Chatushtaya, we have to state the Pramana, the source of knowledge, the Prameya or the Vishya that we deal with, the Phala, the result that comes from the study of that discipline, and the Adhikaran is the person who is qualified to pursue that. So when we take this Adhyatma Vidya, Adhyatma Vidya is science of the soul. It's a Moksha Shastra. Because the purpose of human birth, wherever anybody is, as a human being, it is intended for all. And so the Dullabam, to get this human birth, and the best use that it has to be put to is attainment of moksha. Moksha is not a post-death experience. There is Jeevan Mukti. And moksha is not a religious uh, concept for that matter. It means total elimination of tapatraya, adhyatmika, adhibhautika, adhidaivika. And attainment of permanent happiness. Everybody wants, even a hedonist or a materialistic uh, person wants happiness on a permanent basis. Only the modes for which they are trying to attain that are different. They have been taken to drinks or drugs or vishaya ananda, forgetting sahaja ananda, atmananda, which is object independent happiness. They are pursuing object dependent happiness. That is not the solution. So, people have to be made of their education system. All the emphasis on Western philosophy and other, other things, they know more about Shakespeare, British, American history, all that, but very little about Kalidas, Kamban, our own uh, rulers mm -hmm. and our own itihasas and uh, culture. So this is the task that we have ahead of us. Yeah, it was a wonderful thing what you said. I just a query you mentioned about Anubandh Chatushtaya. Mm -hmm. uh, Anubandh Chatushtaya, you referred Vedanta sir or which one, which text? Because in Vedanta sir, the four Anubandhas are Shadhanand Dikshi oh, say. Yeah. The first is Adhikari, Vishay, Shambhan and Prayojan. But you mentioned four, in other text you refer? Matila's perception. Uh, which, who is that? Matila. But the one who is, said uh, Eastern religions and Western. Yeah, particularly. So he makes a reference yeah, where yeah, this, uh, the knowledge systems are four. Anvikshita, Ivarta, Dandaniti. And uh, this is science. Science is based on the experiment. Hypothesis, experiment, observation. Shruti, Yukti, Anubhuti. It comes to the same. So these scientific techniques are there. Science in the narrow sense, Vishay, botany studies, plants, zoology studies, animals. But when we say something is scientific, an in-depth, rigorous, uh, systematic study is also a scientific study. So Avastatraya, Panchakosha, Examine that self-discovery. Who am I? Any other news? That is what is responsible for self-alienation. Alienation from another, from our own true Brahman nature and uh, uh, the other phenomena in the Jagat. Yes. Actually, I have a query for our guest. Uh, sir, you, uh, your 
part of your karma is in administrating and putting together all these diverse uh, institutions in the country. And uh, you're doing that in the realm of culture, something that's very intangible. Could you speak a little bit about the challenges and how you overcome them in creating this institutional support system for this diversity? A very uh, challenging question because, see, uh, art and artists in this country still do not have that kind of, uh, like, uh, uh, like, both in terms of uh, finance as well as in terms of, like, a structured organization, uh, organization in an organized way, it is it is totally lacking because I just quote you my experiences with the NST. Like when I went there, like things were so unstructurally organized. Like there was a very ad hoc approach. Uh, although this institute is running from last sixty years, but the focus was very narrow. Like uh, most of the the administrator as a theater director. Their approach is that they have NSD alumni, they have a kind of festival, Bharatan Mohsav, and a few of activities within the system. And they feel very happy about it. They tend never look beyond the NSD, like Indian theater, like Indian theater, which only 1200 alumni of NSD in last uh, 40 years. Or only 60 years. There is, a, there are almost more than a lakh theatre artists working in different uh, regions. If you combine the entire India, it may be more than lakh or high number also. And they are not from NSD. They have some uh, people who are doing as a hobby or some as a like part-time job or something. So, a institution which was supposed to like develop a model to promote Indian theatre mantra Bharatiya Rangmanj. They never have that plan, they never have blueprint or like the, and that's another example how we were influenced by the European thoughts. Like Alkaji, he is a great man, no doubt about it. He was passionate, uh, he did best in setting up NSD. But he was having the influence of that Shakespearean theatre and how this experience theatre came into being whatever I have gathered from the literature see we have lot of traditional theatre in India Swan, Nautak, in every region there is a form of theatre uh, go to any part of the country you will find it a traditional form of theatre but instead of promoting that form Britishers what they do they want to destroy our culture they want to bring their own culture so they invited the theatre artists from UK to entertain their armies. And that way they promoted the Shakespearean model of the theatre in India. Now they invited a group, slowly, slowly they attached some Indian with that. And what will happen? The people who are surrounding, they start learning, they start performing. And like uh, Alkaji and there are some later directors, they were also have some qualification from outside India. So, the model of NSD becomes just a kind of uh, modern Indian drama. They, they forget about uh, folk traditions and folk dance. They forget about Indian theatre. Like, and factor of matter is that, that NSD is just focusing on that. So, in la when I given this opportunity, the first thing I try to break that the circle, like I open it up to entire theatre community, and and this revises the syllabus also. Like uh, in one year, the syllabus was not revised from last 25 years. I revised the syllabus just in one year. May there was no can you believe in an institute like NSD, there was no structured syllabus. There's a one topic, and teacher was given full freedom to teach according to his understanding, his knowledge. So it varies, like. And uh, suppose uh, 
Manoj Vajpayee is teaching acting, he will be having his own way of teaching somebody else. So there is no guideline or structured slavers, what topics, what content should be covered. The theory part is very, very less. So we try to make it structured. And, and then second thing which I opened up in that was participation and collaboration with other, because there is a huge amount of money available with each and every ministry to organize cultural programs and we were not utilizing that facility like uh, I organized, I started a new way of street theater like messaging, like collaborated with the Ministry of Warfare and we organized street theater promoting cyber crime. We organized uh, more than 500 uh, street plays in India in different location on blood donation. Uh, we organize street plays in promoting uh, various kind of like uh, uh, drug abuses or even on environment. Like uh, when I left that place, even that time I was having a project to to organize the street theater at block level from Ministry of Rural Development. They want to promote like this circle piatra with you. This is going prime minister's day. Earlier idea was that we should organize block level street theatre to promote such schemes to the people. Because street theatre is a very strong media of messaging. Because it's a live media and people who attend the play, they definitely got the complete picture of that. So like this transformation, in, I was there for near about two years. and. Uh, there was no so many such transformation, and I am not a person from theatre, but I am I love art and culture. I understand my own, uh, and whenever any responsibility given to me, I try to know the like our roots, how these roots can be. So many of the programs and policy which I initiated there were in the direction of promoting our on form of theatre like I organized some kind of program given more workshop to the folk theatre, folk traditions and other places. So basically this is my experience like even in IGNC I am there from so many years and uh, I have opportunity to like in committees in many of, many of the cultural institutions. Somewhere what is happening like there is a mindset that the person from that field should be the director of the institute, which I feel is wrong. Because you need an administrator who understand culture, understand their discipline, but know management better, administration better. Rather than like as a director of NSD, director of NSD will never have time to direct a play or to teach the student because it is a demanding position. You have to look how theatre can be promoted, how activities can be organized because your role is administrator. So somewhere I think most of the institutions are uh, of the Ministry of Culture lacking that kind of leadership quality. So somewhere I think that's a big vacuum like this few days back Ministry again asked me to take up charge of some other cultural institution. I bluntly refused because I say now I am not the staff need to put anywhere where we want. I have my own uh, uh, interest and I, I don't want that kind of arrangement again. So I think we need to develop cultural leadership. That's the one area. Second is that somewhere art and artists are mostly depend upon government grant or they always look for donations or grants. I think they are not willing to stand up. Like theatre in Mumbai is very popular. They are keeping the tickets and everybody is buying tickets. Same in Kolkata or in Guwahati also. There are many pockets where theatre is being considered as a source of livelihood. People and big actors are working in Marathi theatre. But that's not the same case in every, every India. Like the, that, we have never created that culture of buying tickets and seeing the theatre or other. Uh, and that's why dancers, uh, Musicians, they always look for government program, and that way our culture is not being promoted. Like 
culture will be promoted when people come with their own interest and they are willing to spend money to like it may be uh, uh, performing art, it may be for museums or galleries until unless we develop a culture that people should come to enjoy, get entertainment and feel it is an informative or uh, enjoyable place. Somewhere as a part of cultural policy it needs to be taken up and this is something I have been telling many people but I still don't see that kind of like uh, awareness or uh, kind of initiative taken by the people that they should take lead in having a real a good cultural policy because culture is a definitely a, our strength and a country like India I mean, we have such a vast heritage somewhere I think it can be a good source of livelihood for many it can be culture can be a very good industry that creative industry cultural creative economy we have not thought of like that last just on this uh, Monday we have a book discussion there was a book written by one Harsha Bharti that's on it was a good attempt on creating cultural economy and so uh, those kind of like initiative are very much required and somewhere uh, Ministry of Culture needs like NSD 70 crore is not sufficient for entire theatre of India you need at least thousands crore budget to promote Indian theatre folk traditions and Government will, central government will never give you thousands of crore. So then state government also take, need to take up their responsibility. In this, I will introduce a new model. I wish that will be done by Gujarat government. I met the secretary of culture of Gujarat government and I recommended to them that you create your own repertory company. Because you pay for them and by doing that, what will happen? Uh, your Gujarati theatre will be promoted, language, see, by theatre is a full form, like dance or music has one component, but theatre has all these components. So it's a big source of promoting culture, language as well as your traditions and you, it, it is a good messaging like, if you can create a lot of meaningful uh, uh, plays and uh, uh, promote it. So I think that's, that's the way I look, uh, but somehow, uh, whenever I have an opportunity, I try to do it. Uh, I am at the stage right now that I am in a scale which uh, I, I am getting higher salary in the government system and there is no increment from last two years because I have reached at that uh, salary. So, I work for passion, not for money. Like that's. Uh, because when I accepted this NSD position, it was junior to my present level. Even then I don't mind accepting it because I want to do something good for NSD. So that way, uh, and whatever I have learned, it is because of my work only. Not I have not, I am not a like scholar in this field. My scholarly interests uh, are entirely my PhD in library science. I am a computer science graduate and uh, library science post graduate and chemistry honors graduate. So I have interest in culture because I feel that uh, if we don't do anything, we, if we don't preserve it, uh, our gen the next generation will not forgive us. They will feel that we have not done any justice to them. Hello, Charu. How are you? Good, sir. Hello, sir. So nice to see you after a long time. Eh? Good, sir. Well, oh, thank you so much for those of you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir. It's a wonderful session, really. Uh, truly, you mentioned that the culture, you know, it's all. We are talking about the Vasudeva Kudumbukam. I would like to recall one of the famous, not famous, oldest poet from Tamil Nadu. Yadum Mure Yabarum Kevi. Every land is my land. Everyone is my friend. It was written 3000 years ago. And now when we recall our the cultural background and the strength, really, 
is uh, very difficult to explain. We have strong cultural background, heritage, civilization, etc., etc. What I noticed presently is that our generation, I mean present generation, they fail to understand the philosophy behind the culture. Let us take an example, a festival, any festival. Like uh, here, we are celebrating Pongal. It is some kind of a natural like, thank-giving ceremony. In Africa, they used to do that. Like a thank-giving ceremony every year, they used to celebrate. Like a rain-making ceremony. The same way we are celebrating here, which has been just last month. The people, they do wear new cloth, they play jelly katu, and they cook food. At the same time, they fail to understand why they are celebrating Pongal in front of the sun god. It is some kind of celebration which needs to be understood. And the same celebration has to be uh, shared with the other state people as well. The lack of sharing of a celebration, the lack of understanding of a celebration, the lack of understanding, particularly the philosophy behind the celebration, it divides us. For that, I think our children, our forthcoming generation, particularly the school going children, has to be taught real meaning of the why, what is the use of culture, what is the use of heritage, etc. etc. These are the lacking area. Otherwise it be, it will become a formality. That's what my own understanding. Thank you so much, sir. Absolutely right. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, I feel unfortunately we don't have a cultural education in our curriculum. We have all these science, literature, many things, but we don't have a cultural education. And uh, sir, for your kind information, we have started a small program here. Uh, I met, uh, when I came to this place, I interacted with the communities, met with many professionals, uh, visited many communities here. So one day I was sitting in the ashram, some idea came to my mind. That program we have started, that is the National Capacity Building Program for Artists and Cultural Professionals. We launched the program on 1st June. The objective of that program is to, as you mentioned about the sustainable and creative art industries, the main objective of that program is to uh, create that, uh, especially introducing the art industry concept and how by using the indigenous knowledge systems, especially whether it is the visual, whether it is the performing or any forms of art, how the artist can survive actually. Because the practical thing is when we visit an exhibition, like suppose a Gopalji's exhibition we visited, we saw his beautiful artworks, we appreciated, we commented, clapped and everything. But many artists, not all are the celebrated artists, they do not have such sufficient opportunities. Even if they do not know how to explore in their particular fields, even if they are not aware about the schemes, as I mentioned about, there are the crores of rupees with the ministries, but we do not know how to use them. So when this national capacity building program we did on the 1st June, some hundreds of artists came. And uh, the feedback was, it was for the first time something uh, organized for them. They got some platform to interact, Gopalji was also there. So through that program, sir, we are trying to, we just took Puducherry as a, the role model or is a place to implement that and we are also getting a good response to work with the communities, educational institutions not only in India, other states but also in other countries and I hope that IGNC as the nodal agency for implementation of uh, art culture especially starting from the ground level to the top level and many such branches are there. Uh, in this way we are also sir, uh, organizing some programs for the museums because in Puducherry said the museum sector is very neglected you can see like uh, this Puducherry museum the government is trying to renovate because the space is not enough we do not have a good museum sir, here where you can spend some time and uh, we are also trying to create some uh, digital repository digital museum because Shirovindo has also mentioned about create about this Vadesi museum in one of his writings he has mentioned so maybe in collaborative way with the NHG and Sangeena Academy, IG, and I was part of the Sahitya Academy also. So the dynamic guidance and support many things can be implemented. I think 
Okay. This city has uh, three very important organizations and uh, it uh, decided to come together. These things are very much implementable and uh, because the biggest issue in uh, field of culture is the funds. Yes. And I don't think these institutions have that kind of issues with the funds. They can very well uh, create those kind of resources and uh, can take a very, very much lead. And uh, they are grants and if they ask anything from government, either state government, central government, I don't think governments will say no to that. So I think this branding need to be cached. Uh, because uh, you people are not a simple NGO or society. You are having a big name associated with all of you. So I think utilize that and uh, definitely uh, have some plan because uh, this capacity building, uh, first you have to develop a kind of course contents or structured slivers focused on certain category of artists or yes, it is very much possible. So just a query that uh, because I was not closely associated to when I was in Delhi and I was also the nodal officer from Science Academy to the Ministry so at that time we had a good contact. So this national cultural policy which was implemented, uh, uploaded on the Ministry's website, is it finalized and you know it is not? It is still not finalized. the process. Any other views or the way? I think uh, the time has say to goodbye to all of you and uh, really uh, on behalf of Sri the Society uh, we pay our sincere thanks to uh, Dr. Ramesh sir for sparing his valuable time. It was really a memorable time for us because uh, that there is a fix, everything is fixed like on 8th, so 3.30 to 5 some time was fixed after many one decade we met here and the way you interpreted culture especially addressing the critical and the issues especially what is happening around the world and we are also thankful to all of you because also for this active participation and uh, we definitely continue this interview especially in collaboration with IG and CA, Madam from Pondicherry University Philosophy Department and uh, Arvind Jaakiji sir, he is in uh, Ashram School, studied from the Ashram School and an eminent artist sir and moreover he is an uh, athlete, he runs for some 25-30 kilometers, he has some records also in Puducherry. <laughs> so we will continue this uh, and whatever little we do, we will keep updating you and uh, wherever your guidance and support is needed, we request you to support for this. And uh, may I request all of you to kindly join us for a cup of tea. So thanks to all of you and we'll meet again. Thank you. Thank you all. And whenever you are in Delhi, please come to IGNC.